We asked the Japanese to go on site, and they said there is no site, there is no place to go. So we said, well, we still want to go there. They were very surprised. They took us on the boat, they moved, and we spent half a day there, in the middle of nowhere, just watching, watching the water. So I think that probably 80% of the inspiration of that building came from that day. We spent in the middle of nowhere, floating on a little boat. And not because we, were, we are so inspired people, but because you need sometimes some silence, and you have to grapple things. You have to listen to the little voices that are around. An architect's journey begins with a search for form, the creation of an idea, a design. The German architect Frei Otto once said, I'm looking for the secret code of nature. Nature is a reference providing structure and sending impulses to unify the elements. Above all, the design of a modern airport requires two things, the pursuit of harmony and a clear balance between nature and technology. I think what is magic about an airport is that you are changing speed. I mean, you, are, you go from moving on land to fly. It's also a moment of suspension. I fly half of my time. You take off and you get far away from what you're doing and then you come back. And so you become a better judge of what you're doing. I mean, traveling is that kind of magic. Traveling by train is magic. Traveling by car is magic. Traveling by plane is even more magic. Because you get in a different world, different, different speed, different ground. The beauty of clouds, the beauty of view, bird views, is a dream. If you have to tell a story about an airport, the story must be about flying, must be about lightness, the sense of lightness and light. So the idea that this airport may land, may be like an immense glider landing on the artificial island, it was double magic because of the object itself that got to be so light and because of the, of the land that was not land, it was an island reclaimed by the sea. Renzo Piano's world, an aeroplane is like a boat sailing into a bay after a long cruise. The traveler arrives on the island and forgets he is in an artificial world. With Kansai International Airport, a totally innovative idea in airport design was to be immortalized a superlative construction, 
a new terminal opened in September 1994. It lies five kilometers from the coast of Osaka and is the longest building in the world. Airport, an entity reflecting nature, designed like the movement of waves on the sea, on the tide going in and out, orientated on wind currents. In his design, Renzo Piano discovered forms and structures which recall the fleetingness and transience of air travel. Similar to the great railway stations of the 19th century, he has shaped the beginning of the 21st century with a new progressive spirit. Piano has freed the airport from the heavy burden of the past. Transparency, open, airy spaces, levels flooded with light, and traveler-friendly functionality form the essence of the terminal. The terminal was designed by the Italian Renzo Piano. Just look at the range of colors. These don't smell Japanese, they emanate perfume from the Mediterranean. Whether you see the terminal from outside or from the air, it looks like a massive bird which has spread its 1,700 meters of wingspan to rest on an inhabited island. It is, in the truest sense of the word, an artwork. It isn't Japanese design made by a Japanese designer. It's a first-class piece of art. The airport is an organism which travelers enter into to become part of a choreography of movement, materials, light and shadow. The light creates ever-changing scenarios and leaves space for association. The airport is a warm oasis of travel and the airport is cool science fiction scenery. Architecture is constantly changing, improving and adjusting. That's what airports are about. Hard and soft forms form the network of steel winding around the core and the ever-repeating curves continuing through the entire building. A wave is breaking over the island. At the beginning of the design phase, Renzo Piano described himself as feeling shipwrecked. Being lost in apparently endless space led him to search for references outside the merely physical context and the collective consciousness of memory and culture. A building can only become a piece of art if it's able to transcend the mere facility to satisfy human needs. The airport becomes a stage, pulsating with a constant transition between speed and standstill. The starting point for the building of Kansai Airport was the noise pollution caused at Itami Airport. There are a lot of housing areas close to the old airport. The noise became a massive social problem, which eventually ended in legal disputes. In order to solve the problem, it was decided to build the new airport five kilometers from the mainland. It was a radical measure which the airport manager had to take at the time, and it was also extremely expensive. Now we have to manage the airport with a mountainous debt of one trillion yen. That's around 6.5 billion euros. One hundred and fifteen thousand flights arrive and depart from the airport each year. Almost 17 million passengers meander their way through the 42 gates. The administration realized over 30 years ago that a second Japanese airport would be needed to raise the region of Kansai, with its capital city of Osaka, out of the shadow of the imperial city of Tokyo. In 1988, it was decided to commission the Italian architect Renzo Piano 
It then took another six years before Japan could open its second door to the world. And it had to grow by five square kilometers. You know, the, the funny story is that they were very proud about this project because they got to change all the, the school books in Japan because the, the surface of Japan went up by a few acres. Not very few, quite a, quite a lot. I mean, this island added to Japan a square meter. <laughs> so, starting from a poetic or cultural consideration to the most practical one, like organizing 5,000 people, we got on that island 10,000 people at war, of which half were actually working on the airport. To reclaim the land for Kansai Airport, 180 million cubic meters of earth were transported here for the first island, and more than 260 million cubic meters for the second one. Altogether, 400 million cubic meters of land was reclaimed. There had never been such a major construction project in the world before. Building the Panama Canal required around 200 million cubic meters. We needed twice as much earth. The soil was transported from three different places around Osaka Bay. Even mountains were scavenged and tossed into the sea. Without the help of the three townships, we wouldn't have been able to transport the earth, which had to be brought here by ship. Actually, they've been even thinking about floating uh, surface, floating airport that didn't work for a number of reasons, including the fact that if you make floating airport in that kind of water that is quite shallow and, and warm, you don't really know what happened in that darkness in the next 200 years. So everybody was very scared about that, about, because, fine, because uh, challenging nature is fine, but, uh, but you have to be careful. You have to be careful about what you do. So finally the idea was really to, to reclaim by using rock. Uh, so this is a typical mentality of, of Japanese. entity of closed spaces and as portal to the world. An intersection, place of departure and getting away from it all, escaping. For a long time now, architecture has not only been about functionality, it is also being original and telling a unique story, one which fits both the place and the people who use it. Even though the architectural concept is obvious, travelers need to be provided for in other ways. A place to relax in a stylish lounge with the largest library of mangas in Japan. In the airport was awarded the Monument of the Millennium Prize, 
not only because of its clear and consolidated form. The inner wave absorbs the sound and mutes the acoustics. One feels once more in an unreal space in which sound appears to float quietly. The architect's journey leads him through cultural worlds, typical and untypical impulses waiting visibly and invisibly to be integrated into the grand idea. Even for piano, the work in Japan meant diving into the depths of tradition, which only became clear when he had completely submerged himself. You have to go to Tsushima, we have to go to Kabuki, or, or you just we have to walk the, around in Nara, or in Kyoto, or even in Tokyo, or Osaka. And you have to understand what is the culture there. Even the sense of color, even the sense of graphics, even the sense of uh, signs, not physically, almost like, especially in the night. When you go next morning, you don't even recognize where you are because it's completely changing. So you have to grab all those things that are not there, but they are still part of the culture of the place. Architecture is about stealing, but I don't think you steal really from the form, from the shape, because then you end by making something too literal, too literal to oversimplify. No, I think what happens then, they, they have a kind of resemblance only because uh, traditionally, all those timbers were using curve shape because they were good, and they are good, because they, they create a better geometry resisting to earthquake, more light and more efficient. And the reason why we got that curve, both transverse and longitudinal, because actually on the two kilometers of, of the construction, there's a long curve that goes down like that, it's the same, it's the same reason. It's also because we needed to find a shape that was good, structurally good. We were not inspired by those curves, but by the cause, the reason why those buildings were made like that. And we went back to the source, and the source is that in Japan, if you're not careful, things come down. Just one year after the first island had been completed, we had the massive earthquake in Kobe. The earthquake was felt strongly at Kansai Airport, but there was no major damage. The airport proved itself and was used as a support base for Kobe's emergency aid. We distributed the necessary relief supplies from here by ship and plane. Four years ago, we experienced a huge typhoon. The waves broke over the bank protection and water flooded over the island. To keep the water at bay, the banks have now been strengthened with large rocks. There's still a major worry about tsunamis in Japan, so the floodgates have been raised to resist any waves. The airport has been racing to avoid becoming a modern Atlantis. Strong currents and waves have been relentlessly eroding the island. Shortly after the opening, the international press were announcing the demise of the floating mega raft. For about 20 years, it's a kind of going down. Nothing wrong, nothing special, but it's part of the story. So this mythology of the building of the building of the airport disappearing one day in the water is part of the imaginary. I think the total amount of uh, settlement of the land, the total was about five meters. 
so it's quite a lot. And now, of course, the settlement is much less. Every year becomes less, 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 and then it will disappear in about 20 years. But all this is scientifically controlled. But of course, in the imagination of people, it did work. challenging the sea makes a very nice the idea that you challenge nature but you don't win <laughs> and eventually you lose uh, and and this is part of the game On his journey, the architect realizes that he can only create a space which, when finished, develops its own dynamics, apart from the form. At the opening of the airport, reality and architectural vision became one including the culture which Piano had been trying to fathom out for years beforehand, and ultimately integrated it into his design. The reality, a hotel for four-legged friends, and a gigantic complex of prize-winning restaurants. The airport as a public space. On the 2nd of August 2007, the second island was open, but so far only the runway is finished. Kansai is one of the largest metropolitan regions in Japan. It has an enormous potential due to the many economic sectors there. It's the first airport with two runways in Japan. And because we have an airport which can work 24 hours a day, we are able to take full advantage of this. We intend to expand KIA into a prominent international freight airport and create a gateway which connects Asia and the rest of the world with Kansai. That airport also got to represent, uh, to celebrate in some way, the pride and the technical capacity of Japanese. Yeah, funny story. When we broke in the ground, I got to ask a question to the building. I said, 
what is the final date? And I said, well, the date is that one. I don't remember, that was the date. And they watched me and they said, what time? So I gave them the date because the client told me and I got in the ritual of breaking ground. I got to say the date. The date was 1st of April that year. And they asked me what time. I told him, I told them midday, like that. I didn't ask anybody. I, I said midday, I thought it was good and it was midday. <laughs> The architect's journey ends just like any other traveler, with a final fleeting glance at the shape and away.